Looks like defeating the golem has led to an infestation of cultists at the dungeon entrance. Oh well, with my cool new tactical shotgun, I can make short work of this. Still do a pretty good amount of damage anyway. <laughs> but yes, of course, that's not the real challenge. Meet the next boss I'm going to be fighting, the Lunatic Cultist. This guy's got a pretty robust set of, of elemental attacks and also a surprising ability to dodge compared to most bosses in the game with that sort of like semi-teleportation. But that said, by the point in time that you fight him, he's kind of a pushover. He, he really does not do that much damage and the most threatening ability that he's got, the, the summoning one, is pretty easy to shut down. Just look for the, the real cultist, which is very easy to find at dusk because it's the one that has a... a slightly different lighting compared to the other ones. Even if he does manage to get that uh, that summon off, I think all he does is get to keep his clones, which I don't even remember if that gives him extra ability to attack or if that just they're just there. And he also summons up a uh, like a worm type enemy, like the wyverns or like the destroyer that will hound you around a little bit. It's annoying, but yeah. yeah black spot makes it pretty easy to, to dodge around. Yeah, so the tactical shotgun got this thing from the the post. Oh, I guess he doesn't even need to actually finish the uh, the summon to to get some sort of worm on me. Anyway, it does, here's a wyvern. Because continuing the trend of of getting ad battles in every single boss fight since Plantera, here he is. Well, anyway, the tactical shotgun, uh, post Plantera dungeon comes from the pet tactical skeleton, which I met when I was going for the. When I was going for the vampire knives last time, it might not necessarily be as good. I want to say it's probably got like a slightly better DPS than the the Mega Shark, but only if you're connecting every single shot. Luckily, it's pretty easy to do that when you're using chlorophyte bullets like I am, so I think it's a pretty good choice here. Besides, it's also nice to have something a little bit different compared to the the Mega Shark, which has gotten a lot of play so far. Oh yeah, the Lunatic Cultist also gets a, another move in the form of that. I don't know, I think it's sort of like the magic missile you can shoot out type of thing. But you can also just shoot away those projectiles, again, because it's not that difficult of a boss. Well, hey, I'm fine with that. Uh, Master Mode certainly has its share of very difficult dudes to be fighting, so having something that's a little bit of a break is, is good for me. Also got a new potion that I'm using this time, the Inferno one, since I now have the ability to, uh, to fish in lava. It doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. It ignites enemies and looks pretty cool, but that's about it. All right, just about done here. Celestial creatures are invading. Because, you know, it's not even really the cultist in front of the dungeon or even the lunatic cultist himself. It's what comes after that. In fact, the, the Lunatic Cultist doesn't even drop all that much good stuff. You get the Relic and you get uh, the Ancient Manipulator, which is going to be good for creating the the final tier of weapons and armor and all that sort of stuff. Uh, even the final tier of healing potions. But aside from that, it's like, nah, you don't really get too much from the dude. And it's actually kind of a good idea to maybe save off fighting him for a while because, actually, because beating that guy results in... It results in some stuff, and especially on Master Mode, it is not the easiest thing to deal with. There are certainly a lot more bosses that I could be fighting. Uh, Slime Queen, Empress of Light, uh, the Frost Moon, the the uh, Pumpkin Moon, but really, I mean, I'm just focusing on doing a lot of the battles right now, so... And besides, you get some really good stuff for fighting these. What are these? They're called the Celestial Pillars, and they work basically in the same way that events do. There it is. Except instead of uh, getting to 100% to defeat the, the thing, you have a health bar that goes down each time you defeat one of the, the many enemies that are spawning around here. And when I say many enemies that are spawning around here, I mean these things. I, I've said incessant spawns before. It's like this blows that out of the water. They also have unique abilities, and they're also just so many. <laughs> There's so many of them. So yeah, each one of these uh, dudes is going to attack differently. Each one is going to kill me in about three hits. For example, the uh, the guy with the helmet there shoots like a shotgun blast. The queen, queen alien horn, I think it's called, is probably the most dangerous of these guys. Uh, turns into larva, which will eventually, which will very quickly turn into 
uh, queens if you leave them alone for long enough. They also give you these this weird debuff called like gravitation that makes you float around in the air. Yeah, if you see me kind of like floating in midair, kind of bobbing up and down, that's not intentional. That is a debuff that's being inflicted on me. And then there's also guys called Vortexians, which are the ones that are summoning those portals, shooting lightning at me. And this is just one of the pillars. This is the first one I want to fight, because because each one you could kind of consider like a ranged magic summon and melee. And this is the ranged one. And the ranged one drops one real good weapon. When, well, drops uh, stuff that you can use to craft one real good weapon. It also tends to be one of the easier ones. The shotgun blast guys are not too bad to deal with. The Vortexians shooting the lightning out. It's very easy to sidestep those. It's really only the Hornets that are very frustrating to fight. And each one of these characters has like over a thousand health. Even like full shotgun blast the face isn't doing too much. Switched over to the yo-yo there for a while just to try to save on some of the... On some bullets, but it's like... Ah, it's so difficult. The, the stre... And like I said, there's four of these things. And you gotta finish each one to, to like end off each event. And you gotta defeat like 150 of these enemies. You can you you know when you get like some extra damage in on the pillars. By the way, they were the queens evolving. Um, you know you're getting some damage in on the pillars whenever you see like a red um, line after from a defeated enemy flying over towards a pillar. But it's like you it requires so much. If you can actually stay in the fray, it doesn't take too long to do. But if I was near the pillar, it would just I I would die because there's so many enemies. And in fact, that's why I'm jumping around so much right now, because there were so many times I was dying, so many times I just need to... This is actually where that shiny stone thing that I got from the golem really comes into play. Yep, there's that gravitation ability. Bob up and down and then fly away up in the sky. Very limited control over your movements. But like, yeah, this is where the shiny stone thing that I got from the, the golem really comes into play. The ability to get like a massive amount of... of uh, health regen when you're standing still because what I do is I just stand right outside of the range of the pillar and then heal up then go walk right into the range of the pillars get a couple enemies to spawn defeat them rinse and repeat and that's that's kind of the plan for each one of these things oh yeah I have events you know my favorite thing in the game and now you got to do four of the most challenging ones that you're gonna do I suppose at least there's not like mini bosses or bosses that spawn during it but each one of these enemies you could consider a mini boss with how much damage they're doing. Yeah, didn't take out the larva fast enough. That said, once you defeat even one of these things, you do get a pretty big advantage because they each drop stuff that you're going to use to craft that ancient manipulator to get end game equipment. Which is good. Which is very good. And that's why I want to go for this one first. You saw that I went uh, I, I dipped over to the one to the pillar that spawned to the right of my base. Kind of see what it was. It was the pink pillar, and that's maybe the worst one to fight. But at least I didn't have to go too far to find the, the ranged pillar, which is the vortex pillar, which is much nicer. Each one of these things kill you in three hits. And oh yeah, something I haven't even mentioned just yet. Uh, I did defeat the golem a bunch more times since uh, since the last episode, which is why I got like the light pet following me around. Yep, uh, that's master mode specific. He gives off a, a healthy yellow glow that will light up areas around you. Something I haven't really been using until this point since I think that, I don't know, a lot of the light pets don't really matter too much. <laughs> but I've also got like a good I upgrade equipment for an accessory. I have the celestial shell combining the the item that gives you an extra, an extra boost on your stats at night. You can see it right above the onk shield there. An extra stat on the boost at night, uh, and the one you get from the golem gets you an extra stat, a uh, boost of your stats on a day, combined with the one that transforms you into a uh, merman when you enter water, the one that transforms you into a werewolf at night, and you just get big stats from having it equipped. It's very nice. That was like the last one that I got, the last uh, summoning uh, item that I had for the golem. He managed to drop that. Uh, the, the pick saw, which is just a general upgrade. It can mine lizard bricks. Doesn't really do too much else other than... Uh, doesn't really do too much else uh, compared to my uh, my hallowed drill, though. Well, anyway, with uh, with the protection around the pillar gone after defeating enough of the, the enemies around here, I'm trying to defeat the actual pillar itself, which thankfully doesn't really attack you. I mean, even the pillars that do attack you, like the melee one, I think, shoots out fire, and the summoning one summons <laughs> uh, there's still plenty of enemies around here to, to compensate for that anyway 
Come on, it's right there. Right there. All right, there's one of four down. Still got to defeat the rest of the enemies around here. They don't just go away with the defeat of the pillar. They aren't like intrinsically tied to that thing and they keel over when that thing goes down, but at least it's fairly easy to take them out afterwards. And then where the pillar was, you get a bunch of these vortex fragments. Like I said, this is the ranged one. So what you're gonna be able to make with this is ranged equipment, uh, whether it's weapons or eventually armor. You can't create armor until you create the fine uh, until you beat the final boss of the game. But hey, at least you got the good weapons, if nothing else. But hey, I mean, it's like we're really getting there. And yes, this is the final, in fact. I mean, I, I like I said, I know that there's more bosses that I could be fighting and everything like that. But at the same time, this is end game. This is going to be the end game boss, and being able to to de eventually defeat the boss that you get to after beating up all the pillars. It's like it wouldn't really make it too much of a challenge to fight anything else except for maybe the Empress of Light. But even then, I just decided, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Look, this is the most impressive thing you can do on, on Master Mode, if you're asking me. And then a good test out of the Phantasm that I just created with the, with the, the Vortex fragments that I had is fighting this boss, Duke Fisheron, who I've been waiting for, to fight because he's actually pretty difficult. However, that said, you can see already just the sort of power that getting to these Celestial Pillars will afford you. This is a boss that I, that even with like the Tactical Shotgun, I, I have plenty of footage of me losing against this guy. But here, as soon as I create the, the, uh, the Phantasm, yep, not even, not even a challenge. I also wanted to fight this guy because one, I have like over 20 of his summoning material, the truffle worms that you get in the glowing mushroom fields. And two, it's like, I, I was told that like some of his drops are good against the pillars. Didn't, not, nah, nah, I'd rather just use the phantasm. So by the way, the thing that makes phantasm so good is that one for one arrow, you shoot five arrows. And that's amazing. Every time you connect an arrow, that arrow spawns like phantom arrows that will do extra damage. And as, as you're shooting it, you increase in speed until you get to a really huge maximum speed, which is like better than most of the bows you're going to get in the game. And you just do this as this is not like a random drop or anything. You just you just craft them after you you beat up the celestial pillars. It's pretty great. So anyway, uh, here going up against the next pillar, this is the Stardust Pillar, which is the summoning one. And the way that I'm dealing with it is, yes, they are Stardust cells that I'm fighting, by the way. I know, what a, what a, <laughs> of course, can't get away from that ever. And they're blue too, aren't they? Well, anyway, uh, yeah, those things will, um, after you defeat them, they split into four more cells, which much like the, the uh, Vortex aliens will transform back into full-fledged enemies. But unlike the Vortex Queen, they're not nearly as difficult to fight. They just kind of uh, bum rush you. And whenever they turn back into full-fledged cells, well, they do a lot of damage. But they also do damage the pillar when you defeat them. So one of the easiest, so this is actually one of the easier uh, pillars to fight just because you can cheese it out by um, letting the cells respawn over and over and over. And in fact, uh, by the time you're fighting it, you might have a hard time taking out the four cells that spawn from from the one cell. Aside from that, other things that get spawned are like stargazer guys, which shoot a big laser at you if you're in the air. Um, Milky Way weavers, which are little worms that will chase you around. And I think the most notable thing about them is that they're immune to most debuffs. Uh, the flow invaders, which are kind of like these uh, squid guys, are kind of dangerous because as soon as you defeat them, they will throw mini squids at you, which, yeah, you can see it doing that right now. And it's like they'll do that as a regular attack. They'll also throw a mini split at you when they're defeated, and that can do a good amount of damage. That said, just dealing with the cells is the easiest way to do it, though. Although it is going to make it a little bit tougher now that I actually defeated the pillar. But that's fine. This is also the second one that I wanted to fight because, one, it's, like, the easiest of the remaining three. And, two, it does give me an upgrade for my, uh, for my summon staff. One of them can let you summon your own Stardust cells, which I think is very much on brand, and I probably should be doing. But the other one lets you summon a dragon, much like the Wyvern that you, you fight, or like the one that the, the Lunatic Cultist would spawn. 
And that one is just like hands down better. So that's the one I ended up getting. Look, this is the time for min-maxing. It's not the time for uh, being on brand, even though I probably should. Yeah, Cell Staff versus the Stardust Dragon Staff. The Stardust Dragon just does more damage. What can I say? Cells will... Um, I guess the Cells can attack more enemies at a single time, but I don't know. And the more summon, and the more summons that you have the ability to do, the more uh, segments that this guy gets, and can do more damage. So if you can summon up like seven enemies that you can do with like a bunch of different armor, you can get that thing to be pretty big. All right, next up, oh boy, I I would probably call this one my, I don't know the, the remaining two. This is the Nebula Pillar, which I think you would consider the, yeah, which is definitely the Magic Pillar. And this, this is, well, okay, there's these Brain Sucklers. They're not too difficult. They just chase after you. They will latch onto your head and kind of blind you for a while. Annoying, but not too bad. Uh, there's an Evolution Beast, which are kind of the, the ground troops. They'll shoot a homing uh, Magic Ball at you, which will... <laughs> yeah, which will do a lot of damage and also can pass through walls and stuff like that. But the most frustrating of all of them, the worst of all of them are these guys, Nebula Floaters. They they pull the old dungeon trick of teleporting around when you hit them, and whenever they teleport, they shoot a laser at you. And that laser, like I said, all these enemies will kill me in three hits, and this thing will just teleport also into you, very trivially. <laughs> and, oh, it's just the worst to deal with. If it was just the brain suckers. It was. If it was the evolution beast. It was that. If it was that other guy there, which I, uh, what are they called? Predictors, I think. Those guys just summon up. You, you know what homing soul mass is in the Soul series, like the Dark Souls and everything. Yes, and I wanted to get a nice little good montage of me utterly failing to deal with the pillar here. This took a while. Did you notice how it started out being night? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <sighs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, predictors. They, they shoot homing soul masses at you, which means that they summon up like a few um, projectiles around them and then shoot them at you. It does a lot of damage, but whatever. It doesn't matter. They're, they're, they're nothing compared to the nebula floaters. And this thing took so long to fight. And as you saw, I died many, many times. But, hey, it's, you know, even as much as you die, you do eventually get enough. You, you, you do always make progress. As long as you're not exiting the game, you're not losing your progress. So it's not the worst thing, but it's like, man. Man. <laughs> so, yeah, Brain Sucklers, though, it's, it's like are kind of like the, the frontline troops. They're the ones that will go down super easily. And as long as you're not getting the Nebula Floaters attacking you, it's not too bad. This is also a time where it's like if you're going to be doing this event a bunch of times, it happens every single time you beat the uh, you beat the Lunatic Cultist. Yeah. And as long as the Pillars event is not going on, you uh, the Lunatic Cultist, well, the, the, the Cultists are worshipping at the, the entrance to the dungeon. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> so it's like you can, you can choose to fight this at any time. It's so like you can activate this event at any time, and eventually you're going to get a bunch of banners, and that does make it much, much easier. Banners mean less damage you're taking. I think it just do outright doubles the damage that you're doing to to the enemies. So it's like eventually you're going to have an easier time with this, but especially your first time around, it's rough. It's real rough. <laughs> I probably should have actually pulled out some of my potions, but this didn't take that long, ultimately. All right. Well, here it is. The final pillar, as you can see, spitting out hot fire here and summoning an endless amount of enemies. It's, uh, actually, what is this thing called? Well, it's the melee one. And it's, uh, it's got a lot of very special abilities that it's, um, it's summons have. Like one of the guys, I, th I think it's, I can't remember exactly what they're called. I think they're called Korites have the ability to reflect back uh, ranged attacks at you, kind of in the same way that like the uh, the the Crimson Mimic was, would do when I when I was fighting that a couple episodes ago. And that's an easy way to get yourself killed. Um, 
uh, another easy way. Actually, I think the, the things that fly at you are called Korites. Those, like, ball deals. They're, they attack very quickly, and it's hard to take them out before they can take you down. Yeah. But maybe most important of all are an enemy called a Crawltipede, which are, again, another one of the very large worm-type enemies, like you see with the Destroyer, uh, Wyverns, etc., and so on. The Stardust Dragon that I have on my side right now. If you fly when you're near the pillar, it will immediately attack you. If you're on the ground, it does not try to attack. You can see it's kind of like lazily floating in the air around there. And yeah, here's another death montage, basically. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it will kind of like lazily float around in the sky, and you can actually really easily take it out. It, it takes a, a huge amount of damage for some reason. It has very low defense. But if you get up in the sky, it will immediately start homing in on you and deal a lot of damage. So you do have to fight these guys kind of on fair terms. It's the melee guys, you should be fighting them with melee. I think that's actually true for most of the pillars, where it's like, hey, it's easiest to deal with the summons and, you know, like all the, the Stardust cells that spawn when you have summons to attack the, the, the extra Stardust cells that spawn, for example. That, you saw it kind of turn right towards me there. And by the way, like I said, those things might be easy to kill, but they do spawn incessantly. You can't get rid of them regardless of what you do. Yeah, you know, it's like you should be dealing with melee guys with melee. You should be dealing with magic guys with like homing magic so you don't have to worry about the predictors. Again, huge time time jump right there once again. <laughs> Took me a while. The ranged guys. Well, I don't know if the vortex guys really went down to range all that much, did they? I suppose you don't want to deal with the alien goop that the hornet queens are spitting, but still. Ugh, it is. It takes a while, but like I said, you're all every, every time you defeat one of these guys, you're making incremental progress towards defeating the pillars, which is good. And even if you die, you get to keep that progress. It's not like dying against the boss where they get full health unless you exit out after you before you're able to defeat the pillars. And yes, a very very long time later, here it is. Yeah, this pillar, like the summoning pillar, also does have its own attack. Shoots out fire, blah, blah, blah. I think that does do damage to you, but whatever. That's not that's not the issue <laughs> right now. Just kill it. Just, just, please. Now the impending doom approaches. Yeah, that's right. Die! <laughs> whatever, it's just three. But still... Yeah, impending doom, doom approaches. The final boss spawns the second that you defeat all the pillars. I hope you're ready. I wasn't, so I had to instead use uh, some of the some of the the fragments that I garnered to create the summon of it, which actually looks a lot like the sigil the cultists were worshiping earlier, which is pretty fun. And you do get a pretty good amount of time to prepare yourself for this. I might not have been prepared the first time, but hey, at least the second time. I was ready. I made my arena. I knew what I was doing. After all, this is me becoming a master of Terraria. This is what it's all built up to. And do you like the Dryadesk painting in the background? I, I like it too. I got it from the dungeon. D it's there to give me support, along with the nurse who will give me a more uh, literal, who's not so much there for emotional support, but uh, literal support as she will be healing me occasionally. All right. See, it's really the fading in and out, the way everything's vibrating a lot. Oh, you know it's coming. The Moon Lord. Final boss Terraria. The hardest boss in the game. I guess I would say it's the hardest boss in the game. There are maybe there might be some other harder bosses, but like, oh boy, this guy. This guy is something else. So thankfully, unlike the uh, some of the mechanical bosses that I was fighting. He does not actually despawn if I get far enough away from him. So he will teleport to you if I get far enough away from him. But that's not that big of a deal because if he's teleporting, much like in Dead Cells, if an enemy is teleporting to you, it's not attacking you, which is good because he's got a lot of attacks. He's got a gigantic laser beam. You can see right there. That will do over half of my health in a single hit. In fact, I think it might do like two thirds of my health in a single hit. He's got a bunch of exploding things which you can see falling around here, which are frustrating. He's got that little uh, worm thing that he keeps trying to shoot out of his mouth at me, which I'm not having any of because asphalt plus um, all the, the speed increases that I... Ah, I got hit by the beam. Should have made this platform longer, by the way, but it, it's, it worked out anyway. 
so, so yeah, it, he's also got like that worm thing that comes out of his mouth. That prevents you from using like lifesteal abilities. So vampire knives, nah, I ain't doing. Although that it might work because I am running very fast away from him. Hey, you can't attack what you can't catch after all. He's got three different um, eyes, uh, two hand eyes, like a, Mar like a proper Mario boss, as well as one eye in his forehead, which shoots the big laser. And each one of those things uh, is going to be doing big attacks, whether it's shooting just like little darts that you can see kind of flying around me all the time, or those exploding eyeballs that you can see. And when you defeat those eyes, it spawns true Eye of Cthulhu's, which then get improved versions of those attacks, shooting out even larger projectiles and everything. This guy is a nightmare to fight, and he's, he will kill you so easily. Especially because it used to be that, that big laser that he shot from his uh, forehead eye did not go through uh, walls, but with Journey's End, it does. So I hope your dodging is on point. Either you gotta be very fast, or very fast running away from him, or very fast uh, uh, flying around him in a circle. I think it's fairly obvious which one I chose. Well, that was maybe not a great idea, but as long as I keep holding right, I'll be out of range of his attacks for long enough that uh, he's not going to be able to hit me and I can get my uh, potion back up. Or I can just go talk to the nurse. That's why I got her there, after all. The so, uh, nurse is probably not going to die due to Moon Lord related activities because I don't really stick around next to her for very long. So he doesn't really have too much ability to attack her. This is also the point in time where it's like just blindly firing was not working out nearly as well. So I decided to start to take it a little bit slower. But hey, if I'm taking a, too much damage, I can just speed it right back up. He has such a hard time hitting me. And it would actually be like nearly impossible for the Moon Lord to hit me while I'm pressing right. If I made a longer platform. The problem here is actually that I made too short of a platform. So I'll accidentally run into the attacks. Well, oh boy. I'm okay, though. Hey, you got to see those true Eye of Cthulhu's uh, do their do their dirt work, though. Um, if I had a really long platform, like, he couldn't reach me with a laser beam. He couldn't reach me with the exploding uh, tiny eyeballs, those ones. But since it's too short, uh, I kind of am having a problem with that. But hey, at least it's, like, comparatively, even on Master Mode, this is a... Ah! <laughs> This is a pretty, it's a pretty safe strategy. And like I said, this is only the second try that I need against the Moon Lord to be able to beat him. So it's like, if you are also going on master mode, you're really struggling, do this, do this for real. I would 100% suggest it. I have a, I have that red button at the end of the platform so that the second that I step onto it, instead of having to activate a ladder, I immediately teleport back to the nurse's house. And although I do have to kind of like slow down a little bit, like I said, if I just had a longer platform, this would be much easier. A little bit scary, but it's working out. Man, that brain of confusion has actually been MVP. I've dodged so many attacks, which has saved me so much health over the course of this. It might not be as consistent as the item that you get from the World Eater, the the corruption equivalent of the the brain of Cthulhu, but it's which is just like a straight damage reduction. But it's still pretty great nonetheless. So, I'm happy to have it on the team here. Because let me tell you, it, it really does do a lot for me. All right, taking out all three eyeballs. That means that his chest is now exposed. And that's the final thing you need to hit an eye. Can't believe... What was the true eye of Cthulhu way over on the right there? Was actually able to manage to shoot backwards at me? I mean, I guess that's a way to kind of counter my, my teleporting shenanigans. But whatever, man. <laughs> ah master mode as always i had a good time coming back to, to terraria i love this game I, it's a lot of fun and I'll, even if you might be like well it doesn't seem like all that mechanically complex in in uh combat or whatever it's not but it's really about the crafting the exploration the you know even like getting down with fishing collecting everything that you possibly can getting like all the items it just there's so many things you can do in this game. And although I've mostly focused on doing a lot of the combat because I think that's the most like game-like portion, and it's also the most interesting if you're trying to go for master mode in the first place, I would really just highly recommend playing on normal mode. Don't worry about dying in two hits from everything for a huge majority of the game and like figuring out how to cheese out bosses. Sure, it is fun to figure out how to cheese out bosses. You know, really, really get a lot of those attack patterns nailed down and figured out. 
so you know exactly so, so it's like you can say you are a true master of this game even though let's be honest with how this like strategy is can you really is it really worth mastering terraria if all you're doing is mostly just pressing right <laughs> It's like, it's, it, it still was a treat to come back to this game, even after I had just already beaten in Master Mode. It's a hell of a lot of fun, and even though Journey's End was not everything I could have possibly wanted, like I said, I do think Master Mode was a little bit disappointing since it was largely a lot of cosmetic stuff, uh, pets, and, you know, getting the relics. Sure, they're fun, but the bosses weren't really changed up that much. They just do more damage. They take more damage. Same with every enemy, too. It's like, it's still such a good foundation for a game, and there were so many other, like, minor changes and items that existed even outside of doing Master Mode that I had a good time with it. It's just that Terraria, it was the, it was the game I played most before Dead Cells came out, and I, it's no surprise that when I decided to do a proper series on it, I got super, super into it and did, like, almost speedrunning tactics. Almost, because I did do a lot of off-screen grinding. So yeah, I mean, I just just as kind of like a, a final little bit as I am very, very, very gradually wearing the boss down. I really should be kind of uh, sticking a little bit closer to him so that I actually know where I'm hitting the dude, but this guy will kill, can potentially kill me in two hits, so you know. Uh, prudence is a better form of valor and all that. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And then after this point, you do, there is like, you know, stuff you can still craft. You can craft like all of the, the, um, end game with the stuff that he drops. You get like end game items. You can craft end game, uh, equipment in the same way that like hollow bars drop from the, from the, the mechanical bosses, for example. Did, eh? Okay. Weird. But at the same time, it's like the only thing you're really doing is maybe like trying to go for specific challenges, like doing some uh, some of the other events that I didn't end up doing. The uh, Eternia invasion, that was a crossover thing. The uh, the Martian invasion, which I totally skipped over because yeah, I got the black spot, so I didn't need like a really good mount. But as it is, I say... I conquered the highest mountain here, and I feel pretty satisfied with how it goes. You get the warp star from Kirby, which is pretty great, and it makes you move super fast. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. You get the space dolphin machine gun. I I mean it's only fitting how much I was uh, using the the mega shark that I get the proper end game equivalent of it. And of course you get a special pet, which is one of the true Eye of Cthulhu's that that drop from the the um. Well, that, that, that spawned from the, the Moon Lord when he dies. So, yep, I got a lot of really great stuff there. And also the, all the Luminite bars for creating endgame equipment. But whatever. But really? That's it?